respected chairpersons and distinguished audience assalamu alaikum and very good morning to you all today i am here with one of my series paper this is the number 10 of the series and the name of the paper is device closure of large patent ductus arteriosus in young infants a retrospective analysis in a bangladeshi center previous papers were presented in csi congress in appcs and in csi so disclaimer is idea and procedure is from the experience and evidence of my center and you all know that larger tubular pda they needs ligation and because of the high pulmonary pressure heart failure less body weight and reverse shunt in some case these are often refused by the surgeon even by the indian surgeons in 2007 we started doing device closure of this kind of pds with successful outcome which led us to take it as first choice therapy so in bangladeshi children large tubular pda is a common type of congenital lesion that develops severe pulmonary hypertension and shunt reversal at very early stage and most of the pda are often diagnosed as idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension in a study conducted in cma is dhaka we have seen that 18% of the congenital lesions are pda and 30% of the catlev interventions are also pda device closure so what is the significance a large pda can cause severe pulmonary hypertension as you all know because either because of the increased blood flow or because of the increased pulmonary vascular resistance and it is a most common cause of heart failure especially in the newborn in nicu so these are the our study populations you are seeing here the three finger sign and the reverse shunt in this pda and the other ones are also uh, large tubular pdas and these are actually from the last two weeks from my nic lab so surgical ligation of the tortuous hypertensive ductus are technically very difficult and there are no suitable devices as well so we have uh, taken an alternative approach for this which i will show you later so if we go to the history first percutaneous closure was in 1967 and just after 30 years we did the first coil occlusion in cms dhaka and we are using amplexer occluder ado since 2004 ado 2 since 2011 MA4 since 2018 and our center is a high volume one already 2500 cases we have done with various devices so if we come to the anatomical classification of the krichenko our type is the one with tubular type c and if we come to the clinical this is the large variety so in this picture you are seeing that this is the type c tubular pda this one is the type c tubular pda so these are almost like another vessel you can't close easily so this is the tubular pda here you are seeing with the double disc device which is a very good device for closing this kind of pda now these are the various types of options available for long and here are some of the good devices like multifunctional one pfm then edu2 and this is the pico occluder for the newborn so in this study mainly we have used adio with improvised technique adio 2 ma form vsd muscular device and in one or two cases uh, we use vascular plug also so as i have mentioned this was a retrospective analysis and study population was young infant less than 1 year from 2007 to 19 340 young infants were included from two hospital and this is one of the common x ray of this kind of patient and about the work up we took the we took the history we did physical examination and mainly patients were selected from the echocardiography we have seen the uh, we have classified the pda first and then we have decided the shunt uh, direction and then have uh, then we have uh, selected the sedation protocol you know we do this without general anesthesia but we keep the ga always stand by as these patients are very young and uh, they are very high risk cases so about the approach most of the cases we did with the both approach like femoral venous and arterial approach but in some cases we have only femoral venous approach or femoral arterial approach and snare assisted technique we have used for those who are crossing the pda was very difficult because of the twisting of the shape sometime but not always 
So imaging guide mainly we took the fluoroscopy, but echocardiography was also taken. And then uh, what was the approach? So the conventional AD occluder, our approach was aortic end of the device was pulled inside the PDA and the round shape configuration was created, which pressed against the PDA wall and secured the device inside the ductus arteriosus. So I will show you the photo here of the diagrammatic presentation of our own. So this is the PDA and this is the conventional position of the device you are seeing here. And this is the position which we have designed. So this is our own design of, the, of keeping the ductus inside the tubule. And this is also the same here and this is the conventional. So these are the same thing again. Now I will show you some cases quickly. Mahdi, this is from another series and uh, it is only few days ago. So this is the large tubular PDA and this is another one, baby Jahid, you are seeing that one, how large this is and the device technique we are doing. This patient was a very high risk one, you are seeing that the PDA is so large and pressure you are seeing that aortic and PA pressure. So we closed it with the technique which I have mentioned. You can look at the head end of the device towards the aortic end. And this is Nihal and nine months, you see what is the body weight. These are very less body weight patient. And it is very difficult actually to introduce big devices. Here the device size is like 12 by 10. This is another patient, Mashfia, you see only four months old, only 2.8 kg body weight, but device used was 12 by 10. So this kind of thing was unimaginable at that time. Uh, it was in 2012, I think. So I tried first with that 8 by 6, then with the uh, ADO2, and lastly I did this case with the 12 by 10. And patient saved. He was ICU bound for one or two months. And this is the last case I am showing. Nabiha, 8, uh, 8 kg body weight, he used PDA. And here if you see the PDA, this is a type B PDA, which is a fetal type. You can see here that the pulmonary end is larger than that of the aortic end. So you place the device like normal mechanism, there will be embolization. So you use a multifunctional in reverse position. We place the aortic end on the pulmonary side. So this is the position you are seeing and this is the baby on the second day before, uh, next day before discharge. So follow up we did accordingly with the chest x-ray ECG and echo. And if we go to the study proper, you can see here that six month to 12 month is the uh, most of the patient, less than six month is less and female outnumbered female male. And according to the weight, most of the patient are in the uh, middle part that is one uh, three to five kg group. Gestational age, most of them are term and most of the PDA diameter were, were more than six millimeter. And type of the device used, you are seeing here that most of the devices were, uh, these were ADO1 because this is a cheap, uh, cheap one and our most of our patients are poor. And association, you are seeing that isolated PDA is the most common one, but ASD and then coarctation, pulmonary stenosis, these are common association and we did double intervention in those cases in single setting. And then in chromosomal abnormalities, we found that Down syndrome and congenital rubella syndrome are the common, but this kind of patient, Down syndrome, rubella, they are very difficult cases. Their PDAs are very typical type and very difficult to do, and they are very high risk. So cured completely were 98% embolization 0.5, mechanical obstruction 0.5. So in conclusion, I would like to say that transcatheter closure of PDA cause minimum hemodynamic impairment. It can be done. Uh, easily and PA pressure easily came down to normal by 24 hours and this study supports that huge tubular PD can be closed with the conventional device and if double disc device is available that is very good. So take home message is necessity is the main drive behind any innovation or idea and death of our untreated cases led us to find an alternative way. So you can visit our website, Facebook page, YouTube and can see these publications in Insight of Pediatric Cardiology. Thank you.